tired of bloating, fatigue and sluggish digestion. Meet your gut's new best friend, NutraHealth 365's Microbiome Supplement. Restore balance, boost immunity, and feel amazing from the inside out. Smart delay release capsules, real results, gut health, just got personal. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tuesday's episode of Trending. Today, we're going to be talking about implantable brain chips. We're going to talk about the October 7th inquiry and how Al-Qaeda terrorists are now welcome in the White House. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As always, Trending is brought to you in association with NutraHealth 365. The link is in the description below. Now, Today is Armistice Day, so I was going to talk about that, but I, I know my brother spoke quite a lot yesterday on, on trending about it, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. But um, I've got to say, ladies and gentlemen, it is a time of year that winds me up every single year. You've got Remembrance Sunday, and then you've got Armistice Day, um, the 11th of the 11th, where at 11 um, today, you'll have all the usual suspects in the black overcoats um, you know, bowing their heads and, and laying their wreaths and all that stuff as they've, they've done on Sunday as well as essentially the people that have been responsible for the deaths of, of, of people in battle. And so I find the hypocrisy of it quite abhorrent and it annoys me every single year because you've got politicians there. You'll have the likes of Tony Blair, the butcher of Baghdad. You'll have the likes of David Cameron, who, of course, you know, sent troops to, to Syria and Libya. And, you know, they're there looking solemn. But then there's also the others, you know, the likes of Sir Keir Starmer, who have, the current prime minister, of course, is, you know, you know, been, been um, assisting Israel in the genocide in Gaza. But at the same time, they've also been enacting war, waging war on the population, because war on the population isn't necessarily always on a battlefield. Sometimes it's in the high street. Sometimes it's in your own home. Um, particularly when you're locked in it for the best part of two years at the government's behest. So the fact that they all stand there in their black overcoats looking glum and solemn winds me up every single year. Um, lest we forget, yeah, absolutely, I agree with that. But lest we forgive, I think sometimes um, is, is also appropriate. Okay, so first story today, MIT. Um, so that's the uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Um, Researchers developing injectable chips for brain disorders. What could possibly go wrong, Les German? Imagine a brain implant that could be placed without surgically opening a person's skull, but instead through a simple injection in the arm, as opposed to a complicated injection into the arm. Massachusetts Institute of Technology researchers are working on, are they? Just now, just started working on it, have you? Oh, okay. On microscopic wireless electronic chips that can travel through the bloodstream and self-implant in a targeted region of the brain. Yeah, I know. In a study with lab mice, the team found that the chips, each one billionth, it's one billionth the length of a grain of rice, can indeed identify and migrate to a specific brain region without human guidance. Once in place, these chips can provide elec electrical stimulation of the sort now used to treat conditions like Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, epilepsy, and depression, researchers said. So nanotechnology can be implanted through an injection, or like a vaccine, maybe. I mean, that sounds like a conspiracy theory, and you know I don't like them. Um, but this is how they do it. What they do is they will implement something on the sly. So they'll invent something, they'll implement it on the sly um, while keeping the fact that it's going on, keeping its existence a secret, but also keeping the, the fact that it's going on um, hidden until such time as basically you either A, think you can get away with it, or B, people have started to twig. Now, we've seen that when it comes to... Um, Geoengineering. Do you remember when geoengineering was was a complete conspiracy theory? Theory, chemtrails, all that sort of stuff. That was nonsense. Never mind the fact that you know, as far back as the 1940s, they created an enormous flood in 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 Lynmouth, um, down on the south coast of England, by using cloud seeding that then killed a bunch of people. Ignore that. It's a conspiracy theory. 
And then what happened, um, ladies and gentlemen, is people started noticing. People started seeing the, the, the trails in the sky and they started seeing how the weather changed immediately afterwards. And people would start making comments about it. You know, they'd look out the window in the morning and they'd go, oh, mate, it's a beautiful day. This is going to be, oh, oh, no, they're out. They're out again, love. Yeah, put the paddling pool away. Waste of time. And then a few hours later, it's overcast. People notice that. So then um, you had the massive floods in Dubai as a result of, of cloud seeding. And they said the quiet part out loud when it came to those massive floods. And all of a sudden, it oh, hang on. What? I thought that was a conspiracy theory. No, mate. No, it's out in the open now. Too many people have noticed. So now we're going we're gonna to talk about it. So Bill Gates starts talking about it, how he's going to try and, you know, reflect the sun away from us because we don't need the sun. Of course we don't. Not, I mean, it doesn't sustain life or anything, so we don't need it. And then the UK government, just after investing billions of our money in um, basically destroying agricultural farmland to stick these horrible solar panels on it to solve the energy crisis, they then start investing tens of millions, again, of our money in... Um, basically spraying reflective particles in the sky to reflect the sun that you need to power the solar panels that you've just spent billions on. They ain't the brightest. But then, it's a plan, isn't it? So actually, to be fair, they probably would like me to think they're not the brightest, would like me to think that it's incompetence, when of course it isn't. So there's that element of it where people start to wake up to the fact, hey, we can't deny it anymore. Can't deny it anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just put it out, but say we've only just done it. And what that does is that that gives a sort of a deniability. And that's what you'll find here. So if you were saying, oh, do you know, you know what? During the, the COVID rollout, you know, there, there's evidence that there was maybe nanotechnology and, and you know, um, graphene oxide and all this kind of stuff um, being used in these in these COVID injectables, certainly in some of them, in a percentage of them, you've had people testing vials or whatever. Then you go, well, no, 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 no. They're, 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 how? They're only just working on it. How could they have done it in 2021 when they're only just working on it now, you donut? So it provides that, you know, that um, that excuse because we're only we're only started doing it now. How could we possibly have done it all the way back then? Mm, maybe because the technology we're told about in the in the public arena isn't the isn't the full extent of the technology you've got, mate. Um, now, of course, you know technology can be used for good. Of course, it can. You know, you get to listen to me through technology. So, how lucky is that? Now, you know the the ability to um, to treat you know brain injuries and stuff. Of course, you know I've got sympathy for that. I've seen the effects of Alzheimer's and dementia firsthand, you know, and how it affects um, not only the person, but the families, you know, and it is horrendous. And if there is a way to try and reverse that and, and you know, make life better for people, then of course, that's amazing. But that's the sales pitch, ladies and gentlemen, because that's how it's sold. The ability to inject implants into the human brain that can essentially ch change how the brain works, you know, injections that are the billionth the size of a grain of rice, that if you just come out and say that, oh, you know, we can affect how people's brains work by injecting them. Hang on a minute. That's a bit sci-fi for me. You know, people are gonna push back against that and at least have questions about it. Like, hang on, that sounds, are you sure this can't be used for, for dark and nefarious motives? No, 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 no. It's, it's to cure brain injuries. And people go, oh, well, I know people that have had Depression. I know people. I suffered myself. Uh, I know family members that have suffered with dementia and, and Alzheimer's, and and yeah, it's it's horrendous. So yeah, crack on. Yeah, but that's not what it's going to be about, mate. Because it never is. They give you the thing for public consumption. This is why we're doing it. Yeah, tell them that. Don't tell them that. And that's not to say that people or at least all the people that are working on this technology and have previously worked on it, because I'm not having it that, you know, um, it's just being discovered now. Because that's another element of it, to be fair. You can sort of back engineer something. So I can, I can have something going on behind the scenes, already done, already sorted. Yeah, not a problem. Underground base vibes, all good. But then when it's ready to come into the public domain, 
for the reasons that I've said, either that people are starting to twig something's going on or it's just that's the next stage of it. Let's go for it. I can feed some of that information in as new discoveries. Look what I've discovered. Oh, my goodness me. Certain percentages of it. Look, 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 look. Feed that into MIT and, and other um, places. And they go, oh, oh, mate, that little bit of information you've given me there, that's opened up all these possibilities. Has it? That's lucky. You go off and discover it now, Clever Clogs. So that's not to say that all these scientists working at MIT are, are in on some great scheme. They might be doing it. A lot of them probably are doing it, ladies and gentlemen, for, for good reasons. For like, hang on, we can make a difference here. And they just won't know because of the way that things are, are compartmentalized exactly what other aspects are going on, what other things are being put in place with their little bit of it. Now, as an example... Kentucky Fried Chicken, as it used to be, I'm showing my age, it's KFC now, but it used to be Kentucky Fried Chicken when I was a kid. You've got 11 herbs and spices, haven't you? The Colonel's Recipe, it wasn't even a Colonel, but whatever. The Colonel's Recipe. Now, as I understand it, and it certainly was the case, maybe it isn't now, but it certainly was the case, that those 11 herbs and spices, they're made in separate factories, where one factory does its few, and the other one does its few, it might even be three factories, and they don't know what the other ones are so that you don't give away the secret of those 11 herbs and spices. I mean, you'd, you'd like to think you can probably work it out. I'll be honest, I've never tried. But if that's so compartmentalized and it's Kentucky Fried Chicken, imagine how compartmentalized stuff like brain chips can be, where you're developing this aspect, you don't know what else is being developed. But when they come together, you know, it starts to look slightly more nefarious. Um, and so imagine it. You, you look at it every single day. You turn on the television, if you watch television, or every single day you scroll um, through social media, which is apparently now a news um, outlet, and you will see yourself being gaslit every single day. Gaslit into believing something um, by influencers, by governments, by media. You know, false flags left, right, and center in all their different guises. Fake pandemics and all these different things that are there to make you think a certain way, to make you believe a certain narrative, to, to have a certain perception about your reality, who you are, everyone around you, and the world in general. It's a lot of work of, of propaganda every single day. You turn, turn on the telly, mate, you're being propagandized every single day. Uh, scroll through social media, turn on the radio, and even if you go to the pub and have a conversation, you're going to be propagandized because they're going to be repeating back to you some that they've seen on Sky News. So every single day, there is concerted effort to make you think a certain way, to make you believe a certain thing, so you will act in a certain way. Now, like I say, that's a lot of work. But imagine you don't have to do that. Imagine you invent, just invented it, um, the ability to be able to essentially affect people's brains in the way that they operate. And therefore, their moods, their decision-making, everything else as a result of that. That's a lot easier, isn't it? That's a hell of a lot easier. And then imagine that the, that piece of technology that you've got that can basically get everyone on side without having to gaslight them because you can essentially control how they think through their brain functions... Imagine that technology is a billionth the size of a grain of rice. So all you need to do is orchestrate a pandemic and billions of people will roll up their sleeve to have that chucked in them. You can increase the, the childhood vaccination schedule. It's mental. I mean, it was mental anyway, but it's mental now. So you get them at birth, pumping these kids full of God knows what. And if it's a billionth the size of a grain of rice, well, you can stick it in the food, you can stick it in the water, you can spray it in the sky and have it inhaled. You can basically do what you want. And so the technology would give the demons of the world, the governments of the world, and the permanent governments, the people that these people truly serve, the ability to control the population. 
And you think that if they have that technology that would give them the ability to control how everyone essentially thinks by affecting their brain function, you reckon they're going to use that for Alzheimer's and only Alzheimer's or only, you know, epilepsy or whatever to only help the population. See, like, I don't like always wearing the tinfoil hat, but... I struggle to believe that the kind of people, here we are on Armistice Day, the kind of people that will happily throw bombs on top of civilian populations, will send kids to their death in war, will shut down the economy and destroy people's livelihoods and mental health and ability to, to essentially function, will pull the rug from underneath people in terms of, of, you know, rising taxes, energy prices, everything else, to, to literally destroy people's lives on a daily basis. How many murdered kids, how many kids blown to pieces in Gaza alone? And these very demons that control all of this stuff, because it's all, you know, feeding upwards, the all answer to the next level, that these people that are orchestrating all of this could be presented with, let's, let's pretend it's only just been invented, let's, let's pretend, let's go with that game, that they would be presented with the opportunity to control the population, but despite the fact that they despise the population, useless eaters, every single one of us, they will go, I'm happy to blow kids to pieces. I'm happy to destroy the population mentally, physically. I'm, I'm happy to demoralize, but I really hate Alzheimer's and I really want to cure that because that upsets me. Like I don't have a heart and I don't have empathy, but I do when it comes to Alzheimer's, it's weird. It's the only thing I'm bothered about. Are we going to believe that? Not a chance, mate. Now, the next story... Um, it's, it's quite a big story, actually, and I wanted to kind of, I was going to touch on it in the, in the free section, but I know what talking about the untouchables does in terms of the algorithm, so you'll have to go to Iconic for that. So that's the end of this um, section on, on you know, the, the social media outlets. If you head over to Iconic.com now, you can watch the rest of the episode completely for free. The direct link is in the description below. 